Taco Bell is huge in the U.S., with over 7,000 restaurants across the country. It's one of the top five restaurant chains in the U.S. based on sales. It's not necessarily known for its quality, but believe it or not, Taco Bell has been called one of the healthiest fast food chains. And a recent Harris poll also appointed it America's favorite Mexican restaurant. I mean, I love Taco Bell. It's, it's one of those type of restaurants that like, it's tacos. <laughs> I really love Taco Bell. I love the, the variety they have. I would say that me and my girlfriend order it about once a week because we just can't get enough of it. Taco Bell has been known for its innovative menu items like Doritos Locos Tacos, Nacho Fries, and Naked Chicken Chalupas. The company says its commitment to value and innovation is what's driving its continued sales growth. But how many variations of cheap Mexican food can Taco Bell concoct before they run out of ideas? Taco Bell not only competes for fast food dollars with the likes of McDonald's and Burger King, they are also being challenged by many new fresh Mexican chains like Chipotle, Rubio's, Cadoba, and Baja Fresh. Taco Bell is rolling out new strategies to stay ahead of the competition. It launched mobile food ordering, added nationwide delivery, and now sells alcohol at some of its restaurants. You can even get hitched at a Las Vegas flagship restaurant, which has a chapel and a reception area. Taco Bell has become a player in the breakfast business as well, stealing some market share from McDonald's. But the company is also reeling from management shakeups. Much of Taco Bell's recent innovations was initiated under the watch of CEO Brian Nickel. But in 2018, Nickel left the chain to helm one of Taco Bell's biggest competitors, Chipotle. At Taco Bell, he was really kind of the rock star, and, and Chipotle, uh, they got a really great CEO in, in poaching him from Taco Bell. And now Taco Bell must continue to innovate without Nickel to make sure they don't fall behind the competition. To understand how Taco Bell became one of America's top fast food chains, let's go back to how the brand got its start. Taco Bell has been a pioneer in fast food since the 1960s. The chain is credited with introducing an Americanized version of Mexican food to the U.S. The Bell and Taco Bell is named after this man, Glenn William Bell Jr. Glenn Bell was already a fast food veteran by the time he opened the first Taco Bell. Glenn started with a self-service hamburger stand in 1948 in San Bernardino, California. It was just a few miles away from the spot where Dick and Mac McDonald were making fast food history with their burger joint. Glenn introduced tacos at his stand in 1951 and claims to have invented ready-made crunchy taco shells, which made it possible to prepare tacos as fast as McDonald's was making burgers. For the fast food industry at that time, speed was of essence, so for Glenn Bell to really develop a way to serve the food at a faster rate was really big for his business and was a big piece of his success. Then in March of 1962, Glenn Bell opened the first Taco Bell in Downey, California, just outside downtown Los Angeles. Early menu boards explained to curious Americans the proper way to pronounce such exotic offerings like tacos and burritos. By 1967, there were a total of 100 Taco Bells. In 1970, with more than 300 locations, Taco Bell became a publicly traded company. Glenn Bell sold 868 Taco Bell restaurants to PepsiCo for $148 million in Pepsi stock. Ultimately, Taco Bell and two other PepsiCo fast food chains, KFC and Pizza Hut, spun off and became what is known today as Yum Brands. That's why you'll see these restaurants partner up in a single location. Since its IPO in 1997, Yum Brands stock has seen steady growth. Yum stock price has climbed by more than 1,700% to hover around $99 per share. In that same amount of time, the S&P 500 has only risen 207%. Those stock gains mean that Yum Brands market value has jumped from roughly $4 billion around the time of its IPO to $30 billion in 2019. As of 2019, there are over 7,000 Taco Bells in the US, making it the largest limited service restaurant in the Mexican food category. By comparison, Chipotle is the second largest and has less than half as many restaurants. So right now, Taco Bell has about 93% of their stores in the United States with about 7% international. So there's still a lot of room for growth for them internationally. And one thing that they've been undertaking in the United States is selling off company-owned stores to franchisees. And what this does is it gives them some immediate cash, but it also passes off some of the risks and some of the costs onto franchisees rather than the company itself. Um, and that could be good for expansion in the future, especially because um, there's so much uh, open space in the international market. 
same store sales growth has largely been positive over the years with a few notable hiccups. But even the 2008 financial crisis didn't keep it down for long. Sales at locations that have been open for at least a year sank 5% in 2009. But by 2010, they posted positive same store sales growth. But new Mexican chains are popping up across the country, like Wahoo's, which has around 50 locations, Baja Fresh, with approximately 150, Trejo's Tacos, with just under 10, and Chronic Tacos, which has just over 50 in the US. But in the fourth quarter of 2018 alone, Taco Bell opened up nearly as many restaurants as the entire Baja Fresh chain. Internationally, Taco Bell has nearly 500 stores across almost 30 countries. That pales by comparison to some of its biggest competitors. But parent company Yum Brand is looking to double that number by 2022. But Taco Bell has struggled with international expansion in the past. They've tried and failed in Mexico because, well, Mexico already has its own good, cheap Mexican food. They've also entered and pulled out of Dubai and China. As of 2017, the company is moving back into China with a new menu geared toward local tastes. But here in the US, Taco Bell's version of Mexican has become a cornerstone of American fast food. It's the best performer in Yum! Brand's portfolio. Pizza Hut has struggled domestically as more customers choose delivery from Domino's instead of sitting down at a Pizza Hut. KFC, a favorite in China, has seen American consumers grow tired of its menu and instead buy their chicken from rivals like Popeyes or Chick-fil-A. Yum! CEO Greg Creed recently bragged about Taco Bell's sales figures on the company's earnings call. Now on to Taco Bell, where 2018 marked our seventh consecutive year of positive same-store sales growth, once again outpacing the industry, a remarkable feat. 93% of Taco Bells in the U.S. are franchise, meaning they are owned and operated by franchisees. Taco Bell Corporation helps these franchisees in many ways including marketing and product development. Chipotle by comparison does not franchise any of its 2,500 locations, which gives management more control over how the restaurants are run. That control makes it easier for Chipotle to experiment, like what it's doing with drive through dining for the first time. Chipotle's version called Chipotle Lanes is app-based, as opposed to traditional drive through experiences where you have to talk into a microphone on a menu board. This seems like a direct shot at Taco Bell's very successful drive through business. Chipotle's new boss knows that approximately 70% of Taco Bell sales happen at the drive through and some Taco Bells may start looking like Chipotle's. The company has opened a new style of Taco Bell in urban areas called In Line, which features open kitchens, unique art on the walls, and a hipper design. A similar version of the inline concept called Taco Bell Cantinas serves alcohol. They've been popping up in cities like Chicago, New York, and Newport Beach, California. So we are inside right now of a Taco Bell Cantina, which is our latest model of our expansion and growth plan. And over the past two years, we've really developed close to about 50 of these restaurants that are cantina and urban inline. So typically when you think of Taco Bells, you think of suburban and rural areas with drive-throughs. These are very different. These are in downtowns, walkable space, no drive-throughs. We want to make sure that they feel like they're a part of the community that they're in so people can come in and feel like they have a unique experience. Most fast food chains have an innovation lab where they come up with new menu items. But Taco Bell has a very Willy Wonka-like quality to it. The company's creations include wild mashups with Doritos Locos Tacos, and they've created new Mexican foods that were invented north of the border, like quesalupas. Uh, and certainly when they have, you know, sort of outside the box menu items, like say the waffle taco, or the nacho fries, you know, that's an attempt at, at, at grabbing the attention of younger customers who are like, hey, that's, that's different, that's interesting, I've never had that before, let's go try that. Taco Bell likes to stress the value they offer to consumers. They battle with other fast food giants in what QSR magazine calls the value wars. And price is one area where Chipotle can't compete with Taco Bell. Its dollar cravings menu offers everything from burritos to cinnamon twists. At Chipotle, even a side order of tortilla chips is more than a dollar. But with Taco Bell prices so low, it could be a concern going forward as many states are increasing the minimum wage in 2019. Taco Bell may need to offset the labor cost increase by pushing bigger ticket items like the $5 meal boxes. And when low prices and value are your bread and butter, you don't want to push those costs onto consumers. That's why companies like Taco Bell have been looking for efficiencies in operations and using new technology to address wage increases. Another major and ongoing concern for Taco Bell and its competitors, food safety and quality. Chipotle is still reeling from an E. coli outbreak in 2015, which sent the stock tumbling. 
They hadn't recovered until the company poached Taco Bell CEO Brian Nickel in 2018. Since then, the stock price has nearly doubled. They tried to uh, start some national advertising campaigns to get their brand, brand recognition back out there. They went through a lot of product giveaways and promotions and spent millions of dollars trying to regain the customer loyalty that they had lost. Taco Bell dealt with similar problems in 2006, which affected sales for almost a year. Sales at Taco Bell locations that have been open for at least a year declined by 5% in 2007, especially in the Northeast, where these problems started. Taco Bell didn't release the same store sales in 2006, but when they did in 2007, they were down 5%. Then in 2011, an Alabama law firm filed a class action lawsuit against Taco Bell, alleging the beef on their menu wasn't actually beef. Same store sales again declined by dropping 2% that year, just as the company was recovering from the financial crisis. But Taco Bell's cheeky response helps explain how they managed to navigate PR nightmares. They took out a full-page ad in the newspapers to say thank you for suing us. The ad also explained what's actually in their beef. According to the ad, the meat is 88% beef and 12% secret recipe, which Taco Bell claims keeps it from being boring. It's with that voice that Taco Bell engages with its customers in unique ways. Taco Bell's TV commercial taglines have become popular catchphrases like run for the border, yo quiero Taco Bell, and drop the chalupa. Uh, you're looking at Taco Bell with 7,000 restaurants, almost 11 billion in sales, generating about $460 million of, 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 for the advertising budget that they, that they can spend uh, annually. That is three times the size of what Chipotle spends. So they have a lot of marketing and advertising muscle uh, at, at Taco Bell to continue to drive home their message. And Taco Bell is able to be in every medium from TV to radio. Uh, Chipotle has to do a little bit more picking and choosing. Customer engagement across digital is an important growth driver for Taco Bell, according to the Yum! Brand CEO. The company added a senior leadership role who will focus on digital and technology strategy. Taco Bell has even offered mobile ordering and payment on its app since 2014. They added a customer loyalty program to the app in 2015. But the competition is catching on. Several Mexican chains also started app-based rewards programs like Adoba and Moe's. In 2018, Chipotle also started testing a loyalty program which they expanded nationwide in March of 2019. Its digital sales grew almost 66% in the fourth quarter of 2018. Those sales account for 12.9% of its sales. Another growth driver for Taco Bell is delivery. In 2018, Taco Bell made a $200 million investment in the digital food ordering and delivery platform, Grubhub. According to the company, Taco Bell spent nearly a year integrating its systems to create a seamless ordering and delivery experience. In February of 2019, Taco Bell rolled out nationwide delivery through the Grubhub partnership. But despite its popularity, Taco Bell is facing struggles in its C-suite. Some of that is due to the departure of the former CEO, Brian Nickel. Now that Nickel has gone, some wonder if the company's momentum can continue. Once Nickel defected, he relocated Chipotle's Denver, Colorado headquarters to Newport Beach, California, right in Taco Bell's backyard. Some say it made it easier for Nickel to poach Taco Bell's top talent, a process that looks already to be underway. Taco Bell executives Chris Brandt and Tressy Lieberman have both left Taco Bell and joined Chipotle since Nickel's departure. When you talk about some a company like Chipotle, I think Ch Brian Nickel will have Chipotle certainly growing in the years ahead. They're going to open a lot more restaurants. They're going to their sales will continue to climb. But I just I don't ever think that Chipotle will surpass Taco Bell as being this Mexican food experience that Americans love because they're just both going to occupy their own different corner of the industry, and that's going to work out for both of them. CNBC reached out to Taco Bell about Nickel's departure and the 2006 E. coli outbreak but the company declined to comment. Even with Nickel gone, sales still look good, but the pressure is on Taco Bell to stay consistent as KFC and Pizza Hut struggle to find a solid footing, and the restaurant industry remains worried about the rising labor and commodity costs. Taco Bell's trajectory seems to be up, but only time will tell if the Mexican-American chain is ready to tackle the challenges ahead.